Madrid and other places probably there. And hello all the participants that are joining online this session. So we'll start now to talk a bit about the importance of uh, collaboration, multi-stakeholder collaboration to accelerate the implementation of the SDGs, right? So I'll just give a bit of a context and, and then we have an amazing uh, group of uh, people to hear in person and three uh, online from Spain. And we'll talk about a case, uh, an example of the work we've been doing. Is it working? Yes. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> There's some music. And There's some, uh, yeah, <laughs> some tones there. So, okay. So let's start then. Uh, so we are here at the midpoint of the SDGs of the Agenda 2030. We have the half of the path uh, uh, ahead, and now we don't have time, right? We are in a hurry. We need to implement all these SDGs, which is the our social contract as humanity to to survive and to try to, you know, transform the society where we live. Is you know the contract that 195 countries across the globe agreed seven years ago. And the problem is that this the challenge is huge. And we've been talking for the last seven years, working on different SDGs. And we've realized during these seven years that the only way to implement the agenda is through, let's say, radical collaboration between different stakeholders, right? And that's why SDG 17 is so important because it it's, it focuses on, on this topic, right? And I think we all agree on that. At least everyone who uh, wants the implementation of the SDGs and who's working on the agenda. But the problem as we were talking in the previous sessions is how can we implement this in practice? We all talk about the importance of collaboration. We all say we need to create these partnerships. We all say we need to en engage the private sector. We need to engage civil society, citizens. We need to work with universities. But the problem is that we also know how hard this is, right? And there is not many examples worldwide about a radical collaboration with impacts, with fruits, with results. So that's why we brought this session today to just kind of showcase humbly, but showcase what we are doing in Spain, which hopefully will be inspiring for you all here and, and online. So just without any further ado, so I'll go to present the panelists who will talk about this in more detail and how, how this was done in Spain. Thank you so much all of you. Unfortunately, we don't have everybody in person here, but thanks to technology, we can do organize this hybrid session from here and, and Spain. So, and, and it's interesting that we will also, we will focus on the importance of collaboration and, and the main ingredients, but I think it's also important to talk about the impacts that we've already had, right? And thanks to this partnership, there is now some results which are hopefully insp inspiring for you all. So, okay, let's start with uh, Leire Pajin. Well, it's also hard to introduce you because uh, you are very well known. Former ministry in Spain for many years and has been working many places and always has many hats, but <laughs> now <laughs> here, She's the chair of the SDSN Spain, and she also works at uh, IS Global, and also working with Latin American countries uh, um, through this, uh, with the Spanish government, but mainly today a chair of SDSN Spain. Exactly. So I'll ask you, because it, that this will be a kind of more conversational session without any PowerPoints or any slides. So I'll ask you if you can, Talk a bit more in depth about which are the main elements of this multi-stakeholder 
platform the uh, the day after el día después in spanish yeah. and how how this platform is a real demonstrator of the power of the SDG 17 and the power of of working with other stakeholders thank you thank you so much uh, julio very quickly because we are a big partnership so we have uh, some contributions this afternoon uh, but first uh, let me let me thank to maria and to sdsn to have the opportunity to share this innovative partnership with uh, all of you. We are very excited and we are very, very happy to have this opportunity. Well, we we had the opportunity to lead this, uh, this innovative partnership some years ago. We were in the middle of the of the uh, coronavirus crisis in, in, the, in the middle of the pandemic. In fact, we were in the middle of the lockdown. We were at home. And uh, we have started to have a discussion about how to uh, build a new partnership, bringing all the perspectives together uh, in a new joint uh, organization, joint, uh, at the beginning was joint environment, uh, to try to accelerate uh, the implementation of the DGs. And this initiative was led by four organizations, completely different private sector, academia, uh, research organization that we were working before uh, about on implementation of SDGs and trying to push uh, the agenda of SDGs in our country. So, so when we were in the in the lockdown, we decided to, to launch this innovative approach. And now we are in a, in a process of co-creating a new phase. So it's a good time to see some results. Uh, some lessons learned and share with uh, share it with you, and also to have to try uh, and try to identify specific elements that are very key for this kind of, of processes. The first element I, I, I would like to highlight is that uh, the day después, the day after, uh, is um, is not a network. It's, it's not a, a, co a community of a specific organization. It's more um, people and organizations sharing their networks. That is a completely different uh, perspective. Uh, second, I think the day after is also a platform where we listen and learn. Because um, in the three years of, of, it, uh, of its existence, uh, the day after has not stopped learning, co-creating, systematizing, and, and evolving in a changing context. So for us, it's a continual learning and a, a continuous exchange of opinions and, and perspectives. Third, I think um, the day after is also, um, it's, it's not a platform of a public events, but this at the same time, uh, a space where we create uh, public discussions about public policy. So it's a, an environment when we try to influence in public policy, inviting people, who is leading public policy, but also trying to connect this discussion with other key actors. For I think that it's important to, to, to say that um, the day after does not compete with other networks. We, we, we try to join other networks and to share our goals with other uh, networks. Also, I think that it's important to highlight that the, the day after is, uh, well, let's say that doesn't not implement projects, but at the end of the process, we have some specific outcomes at projects. We, we, we will have the opportunity to share some specific examples about uh, the missions of cities or the green uh, jobs uh, platform or others. No, uh, At the beginning was not the, 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 the specific goal, but we have created the experience and the environment to create also specific, specific uh, projects. And I, I have to say that in this, uh, in these last years of trajectory, we have noticed that we are living in a moment, in a moment of renewal of the social contract, and we believe that the space generated by the day after can contribute to building, to building its foundations. So we are trying to, well, um, to ask. Spanish act key actors, government, private sector, civil society, and society in general to, to build a new social contract in terms to uh, achieve SDGs. We want to, to now to continue to build bridges, to build paths, 
uh, to share moments, to create spaces with the whole purpose of achieving a ready capacity at the end, no? to, to listen and to structure ways of understanding. And we hope that um, uh, from, from, from now, um, the day after will be the platform that provided the, back, the backbone and allows us to take advantage of, the, of, the, of this kind of bridges and, and, and paths. No? At the end of the day, I think that they after uh, response of two specific needs. The first one is the need to reduce the polarization and public debate. We have been talking all the morning about uh, the polarization, about uh, how polarization is drying up the debate, uh, showing relations and making it difficult to, to, to reach agreements. So we are trying to, to create this platform the, to combat this lack of understanding and trying to build some basic consensus around sustainability with uh, key stakeholders, uh, uh, trying to well to provide some calm to dialogue and, and try to build in this new social contract. No? And the second need, I think is very important also, is the need to design and test new models of public-private social relations. We were talking this morning also about partnerships, about how to build uh, private-public partnerships. But the, the 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 question here is how to do it, and if we have some experiences, you know, to to take advantage of, uh, for it. And and we really think that we have some experience and with some some tools that have been working, and and that now can be useful for for other for other situations. In fact, now we are trying to share this. This experience with other countries in Latin America and in Europe, because we we think we really think that we can scale up this new experience. In summary, to be to be short, I think that the day after uh, can be conceived as a large repository repository of interpersonal and inter interorganizational inter interorganizational uh, trust. We with such a, a deposit, uh, we invest in it. Knowing that in the medium of on the land or the long uh, term, the the returns can be very high. So at the end, it's uh, we are in the middle of a process. Uh, we think that we have specific outcomes that are very useful uh, for the future. But maybe uh, the most important step uh, we need to do now is try to to build a kind of big consensus around sustainability and around SDGs in the middle of uh, a society with uh, well with uh, uh, with specific uh, uh, problems and with specific challenges as, as polarization and I think we have now specific outcomes to show how how to do it how to create this environment and how to engage different stakeholders uh, working on the same way and uh, on the same specific goal. Maybe uh, later we can yeah. talk about some challenges like funding or, or others. Great. Well, thank you so much, Lady. You were able to summarize this in a very meaningful way. And But you are probably thinking, all of you, okay, that sounds great. It's what we want and what we need, right? But how <laughs> how can we make this happen and is it real or is it just something that Leire is telling us here but it's not working in reality and that's why we are not just talking about it but bringing the different stakeholders that have been working on this so the next speaker is Monica Oviedo from Iberdrola you know is the one of the largest energy companies in the world and she's the head of Sustainable Development and 2030 Agenda. And now I'll ask Monica. Monica is in Madrid. So, hello, Julia. Everybody. Hello, Monica. Thank How you so you much. So, well, big company. How a big company like this can really work effectively with other actors on complex challenges and implementing the SDGs, right? So you've been working for more than four years in this platform. So what's your experience? How can you summarize the work you are doing and how this is important for you as a company? 
Thank you, Julio, and thank you, everybody. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, yes, private sector is a new actor in, in all this global process. So we know that we are quite familiar and very keen on working with medium and long-term targets. So for us, with the 17 goals, uh, we were like ready to, to work towards achieving uh, these long-term targets. We are we are not so familiar to 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 work uh, in these complex uh, realities and in these complex challenges so in iberdrola what we started to do was to uh, uh, include the the sdgs and the 2030 agenda within our bylaws and that's why we have spread this uh, way of working internally within our strategy so we started to, to, to follow the guidelines of the SDG Compass, the five steps of the, of the SDG Compass. Uh, first, to understand the SDGs because it was a new reality for us. Then to select our priorities. Uh, number seven, SDG number seven and 13 were our priorities to work on. And the SDG number 17, it was our first priority to as a way, as a tool for, for working on these uh, SDGs. So for us, it was very relevant to follow that and to, to take a step ahead and to take some ambitious target. We didn't want to, to fulfill or to work with some uh, targets that were uh, decided before the approval of the 2030 agenda. So with this new sphere, with this new uh, uh, parameter in front of us, we had to take new new ways of working and in in this in this uh, sense for example uh, we have taken a super new ambitious target of uh, for example net zero before 2040 so this is a, a big challenge in front of us and uh, we know that we have to work in a very different way so uh, we are quite used to have technical problems and call an expert to solve this uh, technical problem. But we, we know that in order to, to solve a complex challenge, we, we have to, to do it in a different way. And that's here when uh, the, the partnerships and the multi-stakeholder partnerships appear. And that's why, as later explained, during the lockdown, we were ready to, to, to experiment, to, to try new ways of, of of doing so learning by doing we we are starting we are started since the very beginning to to promote these different partnerships and the different actions in order to uh, to recognize that we didn't know how to to solve and to reach these targets. I think this is a, a very humble uh, perspective and it's very needed and it's not very common to 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 recognize that we do not know how to achieve these targets. So for us, it was very relevant to build the trust. And Lady also was mentioning this deposit of trust and this after these three years in a row where we have been, uh, okay, making uh, mistakes for sure, just not having uh, very good uh, experiences, but we, we have also uh, some mistakes, but we have, a really a specific results and and I would like to mention some of them. So for example, in order to, to have this impactful and, and new work, new way of, of working, uh, we and I see here Valentina, uh, she will explain afterwards the, the job that we are doing with the cities, uh, seven cities in Spain that have committed to be carbon neutral. So Thanks to the platform, thanks to El Dia Después, to the day after, we have the trust to work with these actors because they know that we we we, we do not have this commercial or this uh, traditional relationship. So in order to sell and buy, but we are uh, sharing with them uh, different solutions in order, for example, to to decrease the emissions in the in the heating. No, so we are not selling them 
the solution. We are showing and uh, sharing the expertise in order to help them to achieve this carbon neutral. And this is something that they will impact afterwards in our scope three because these are the indirect emissions that we will have afterwards. So this is like this kind of networks that is very relevant for us. And the, thanks to the, to the day after, we are in this uh, super good relation to, to, to work on that. Another example, for example, uh, with the academia, with the, with the university, uh, Julio, you are there. We have been working in, in the uh, locations where we have closed our last coal facilities and we have launched innovative platform there in order to, without knowing the results and without knowing beforehand what were going to be the results in those, in those, uh, in those regions. And we, it has been also another platform that we, we have been working, but at the end of the process, we have learned that training and the green jobs that you were also mentioning before. So these green jobs was another level that we could include in this platform. So that's why, and thanks again to the the después, the day after, and thanks to the to the knowledge that we uh, we have now for, for another actor in Jeus, we are working again together with uh, uh, um, the academia in Jeus and uh, Iberdrola in order to help somebody to find job in these locations, in this region. So this is a super concrete uh, results that we are looking for. And again, thanks to the, to the platform. Uh, looking at uh, SDSN Spain, we are working on the biodiversity arena in the renewal arena in the in the uh, community agreements that we have to to confirm before uh, launching new renewable projects. So that's another uh, area of with specific results. We, we have a, a new uh, report uh, of uh, best practices in, in, in this field. And again, thanks to the, to the, to the job of the, to, uh, of the DIA después. And last but not least, we, for example, we, we have some super good initiatives in the supply chain uh, um, uh, arena where we thanks to the to the platform we knew that small and media companies are uh, for them is like a burden sustainability is not a, um, a something beneficial so this was something that we learned by heart thanks to the to the community to the, the that we were working in the day after and thanks to that we we are working specifically uh, with our main suppliers for increasing the sustainability in their in their uh, activities so uh, this is some examples but we have more uh, it's like this prototype this is the some term that we use uh, a lot in uh, the day after so um, recognizing that we do not know how to solve the problems, but that thanks to the uh, commitment and the confidence and trust that we have among all the actors, we are ready to experiment and to try new activities and uh, having um, very good results on this field. So um, we can keep on after that, but I try to, to summarize the, the, some of the activities that, thanks to the platform that we have developed. Great, thank you so much, Monica. It's amazing <laughs> and <laughs> and so inspiring how you you said that a private company that large is able to assume the risks of you know starting working in a different way, experimenting, working in solving problems without knowing the endpoint, without knowing the specific pathway to to solve these problems and how. This is possible thanks to a platform like this, where you work with other stakeholders and you find these solutions with others, not just yourself and building, as Lady was also mentioning, this trust and so on. And you didn't mention, because you are humble, <laughs> the work you are doing internally also uh, in uh, you know, bringing different departments across the company to work together, because silos are 
everywhere, <laughs> also in yeah. private companies, of course. And that's uh, important that maybe we can keep this for the questions later. And thank you. Thank you, Monica. So we've seen the how a private company can work on this and it's important for them and they are getting results from working differently. differently. Mm -hmm. But now uh, we move to the academia, right? So we've had also a session before where there was some, one person advocating for uh, having the higher education and universities playing a different role. And I think there is an example here uh, in your position, Carlos, as professor at the Technical University of Madrid and director of the uh, Center for Innovation on Sustainable Development, to summarize in English. <laughs> uh, and I think thanks to your work in this platform and, and also thanks to the university position, the neutrality and, and, and the possibilities that the university brings, uh, you were able to to do all to convene all these stakeholders and create trust. So, how do you see the role that university can play uh, in creating these partnerships? And and what's your experience in the day after? Thanks, Julio. Uh, I can say something, but uh, I think you cannot see me because I'm not being able to to switch the camera on. Uh, a message about the host of the session that uh, is forbidden me to switch the camera on. It's on my screen. I don't know if there is any solution. Sorry. So I, I will have to talk without the camera because I cannot switch it on. Well, let, let's go. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Julio. It's a pleasure to, to see you, uh, you all there and, and to have the opportunity to, to share the experience of the, of the day after. Um, from the from the side of the uh, of the academia, <clears throat> I think that what we are dealing with is uh, something very very crucial in the SDG agenda. It is the how to make the SDG seventeen feasible, how to um, uh, uh, deliver the promise of uh, transformative partnerships uh, in, uh, to 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 uh, accelerate. Uh, the the agenda in all uh, the dimensions, and in the, this experience, um, I would say that we have um, done what uh, is uh, basically common sense, and is uh, uh, something that you can read in every report about the role of the academia in sustainability. First of all, we have taken advantage of the capability of the university as an institution to uh, work with a long-term perspective, we, with a, uh, the, the possibility to, to, to be patient, to insist in um, creating this uh, um, uh, network of networks of, uh, of uh, people and, and organizations that is, uh, in fact, the raw material of uh, this uh, partnership. Secondly, I think we also uh, have taken advantage of the neutrality of the, uh, and the legitimacy of the university to bring to the table to many different actors and to um, uh, create um, conditions in which all of the, of the actor has uh, an important voice to, to be heard by the, the, the others. And finally, I think we, we, uh, we, are, uh, we have had the, the possibility to uh, develop and to innovate in terms of methodology. Once we have the, the trust, we have the networks, the people, the, the, the raw material of the, of the experiment, if you want, you, you need a, a way of doing things. And I think El Dia Después, has um, been able um, um, to, to combine uh, a level of uh, long-term reflection with also a very practical uh, focus on delivering uh, partnerships that are based on the um, uh, capabilities and resources that uh, the, the participants put on the, on, the, on the table. 
So uh, I think we have created what uh, the SDS, SDSN reports call a safe space for interacting, for uh, uh, creating, for um, being bold and taking uh, risks. And thanks to that, I think we can say that we are near what sometimes we we name uh, as an incubator of partnerships. Partnerships are very important, but we, na we need devices to increase the, um, uh, the, the, the the number and the um, and the and the transformative power of, of partnerships. And I think that thanks to um, the um, this combination of institutions, and why not thanks to the intermediary role of uh, the universities, we are um, here to to share with with you an experience that has a lot a lot way ahead, but that is behaving as an incubator a generator, if you want, of uh, transformative partnerships. Great. And now Thank I can you. switch the camera on. So. <laughs> <laughs> now we can see you. Thank you. <laughs> well, as we'll have some questions at the end, then there will be an opportunity to see both you and Monica. And hopefully you can. we can also see you, Monica. So thank you, Carlos. Thank you also for bringing this very innovative role that the universities can play and have played in this case. I think it's, we're talking a bit before about, and I think there is here in the room, the person who asked about or talked about the importance of funding this infrastructure, but you were, you went even further because it's not only about funding, but it's about leading and about you know, creating this space and having the legitimacy and really innovating, as you said, in methodologies and, and also creating the space like the, as an incubator, which is really, I think, powerful. But okay, so now we know the importance. We've seen examples from a, a private company, a university playing this role. And also Leire was talking before from uh, from our research center and also the public administration. But now maybe you can still think, okay, but uh, how can we make this happen? How is this possible to create? It's so hard. So now we have Valentina Okendo, who's uh, um, working at Climate Kick and uh, facilitating and orchestrating the work at the Spanish platform on cities that we were mentioning in a previous session where uh, 15 Spanish cities are working together to transform their urban spaces. And I'll ask you, so why is it important to create this uh, safe space as Carlos was saying? And what's the role that facilitators and orchestrators like, like you play in this, uh, in this environment? Thanks, Julio, for your questions. And thanks, SDSN and Maria, for the invitation and for having me here. Um, it's a pleasure to share this panel with some colleagues and talking about a such interesting and inspiring topic. Um, while listening to you, I was thinking about how to do this, how to put this in practice, because it's not obvious how to do it. And this question, links with other uh, personal questions that uh, I think sometimes how to explain to others what an architect as me can do in this kind of context <laughs> and how a fa what a facilitator orchestrator do. So it helps me to think about it's a shift. Uh, you, you, can, you have to shift your mind, sorry. You have to shift your mind from, uh, from being a uh, project manager to being a manager or, or a co-manager of a large transition process. It's quite different. And those large transition process needs a collaboration context because it's the only way to do these kind of things. It's a kind of, of pace that brings you the opportunity to share knowledge, to sense making, to align 
the different interests, needs, uh, loyalties, purpose, and align them into uh, one main purpose or one main objective. It's like a space for catharsis, I think. And those kind of spaces not only ensure that the collaboration and the interaction between different stakeholders uh, have a coherence, but also it's a space where different people, different stakeholders involved and us as facilitators can share knowledge, but also gain knowledge and nurture different capacities and capabilities that, that are not teach because this kind of role is not a settled role. I like to say that this is like a do-it-yourself role because it depends on the context you work in. And, and this uh, knowledge and capacities and capabilities are linked to different sectors in the case of cities, because I'm working on cities and with cities, we can, we, we can um, have the possibility to work in different sectors like mobility, circular economy, retrofit, uh, but also to understand how to work with different uh, tools that are now supposed to be easy to work with, like for example, climate action plans, climate investment plan, or other kind of tools that are necessary to these huge uh, processes or transition processes. And there are also some barriers um, that you as a facilitator uh, face where, when you are working in this kind of context and are linked with the things that uh, Monica and Leide and also Carlos will say in right now, it's that there are silos, there are um, different frameworks, legal frameworks, finance frameworks, ways of working, organization cultures that it's very difficult to overcome. And the only way you can overcome that and you and, and you can and you gain the knowledge to overcome that is working with people. So interaction and social learning and working in this kind of context is the only way to gain these skills. And I want to illustrate this point by sharing with you my experience in CTS 2030 that was, as later mentioned, uh, initiative, a uh, multi-stakeholder platform that was born uh, with an EDD in, during the pandemic and has evolved over time to um, a space for, for supporting cities to implement the European cities mission in Spain. Nowadays, we are 15 cities. And there is a project um, that it has, it's been uh, funded like three months ago where eight different cities with different parties and colors are um, political colors are collaborating to scale up retrofitting in Spain. And that it's only possible because we are, but because they want, because they are the willingness to do that, but also because we are trying to support them and align different stakeholders, not only cities, but also the Green Building Council, the Green Finance Institute, and so on, and so other multi um, stakeholders that are involved in this in this uh, program. And um, I want to share also four main ingredients that I think it can uh, help us, that help us nowadays uh, to do that. And I think the first thing is uh, bring in uh, expertise to work with others then that know um, very well the frameworks and, and things that are, are happening um, outside our platform or network. Um, the second thing I think is co-creating with uh, within the network, so for the network and with the network. So know uh, to bring pre-designed solutions, but working with them to find those solutions that that meet their needs and and reflect themselves there. The third one I think is uh, to be flexible because there are a lot of different ways of working. It's not the same the way uh, companies work as the way city councils work. It's very, very difficult and different, different languages, different times, different hierarchies. And, and we have to deal with it. And, and the fourth thing is uh, transparency and trust. And I think this is the most important thing. So 
in, in conclusion, because it's very difficult to summarize all this, I can say that complex challenges such as climate change or urban transformation can would only be tackled by collaborating and by having someone or some organization that lead this and fill it with creativity and, and trust. And Kirsten Ludlow said this morning that um, these missions or process are about move minds, hearts, and markets. And I think this is the role of facilitation. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. That's great. And I think now we have the picture, right? You mentioned the importance of a process. And now we can maybe change from facilitator or orchestrator to creativity and trust maker <laughs> and a changer of uh, hearts, minds, and markets. So maybe that's easier to understand. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for this. And, and now we are moving to the Q&A. So we have 15 minutes to, to discuss. We have a online, at least, well, they send me one question from from Gabon, right? So it's great. We are all across the globe today. And there is somebody saying that the private sector seems to be interested in ESG standards such as ISO 26000. And apparently, if they are focusing on this, that leaves the speciality of, of the 17 SDGs to the public sector. Or I assume the, well, anyway. So he's asking or she's asking if that's the perception so i think that's for for monica so apparently uh, yes. you are you are experiencing totally the contrary right so maybe can yes. you explain us a bit yes. more how you think the private sector can really play a crucial role on the sdg implementation Sure, thank you. Thank you for the question. I've already uh, answered uh, through the through the tools, through the online tool. But I, I am more than happy to to just to to interact with with the with this participant because uh, from my perspective, ESG reporting, ESG standards are specifically uh, settled for reporting the activities that we are doing in the ESG. So it's easy to, to have these reporting standards in order to, uh, to find some comparison, some uh, uniform uh, along the, 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 the different uh, perspective. But SDGs and the, the, the 2030 agenda, for us, it, uh, we, we find them like the tool to implement different actions that will be reported afterwards with the ESG standards. So it's not very easy to, to settle these new and innovative activities in these uh, silos, as, as we uh, were mentioning before. But uh, we find that ESG and 2030 agenda are key for trying to do something different in this arena. I see that we have some one hand. Uh, uh, so perhaps uh, the person from Gabon uh, wants to, to have a conversation. I don't know. OK. Thank you, Monica. I don't know if he or she wants to talk from Gabon, no? OK, so there is a question here in the room. In the meantime, yes. Hello. Uh, so uh, what I would like to, to say, well, I must say that since 35 years that my work is to build partnerships. So this is, I am speaking a little bit from my experience. And uh, uh, one of the first things that I say when I do capacity building for that is that people need three characteristics to work in partnerships and uh, these characteristics are exactly that you need to have time patience and resistance to frustration <laughs> yeah. because uh, and the last one is very important because very often you go back in what you have already achieved and then the best way is to say sleep today a little bit earlier, tomorrow the sun will come again. 
So this is the practical <laughs> experience. And the other thing that I find that is important is that uh, partnership building is an emotional process. Because if there is no empathy, you will not build the trust that you need to have a successful partnership. And this is very problematic when you come to the turnover, because you have representatives of organizations that you find that are important, but there is a turnover in these people. And uh, at a certain point, the people that are there, they have the feeling that they are always coming to the beginning again. And so, um, these are processes that we really need uh, to be very clear about and to try to face in a way that we overcome uh, the, this disencouragement uh, issues. So uh, I find that this is a, a very important um, thing, at least as I say from my experience um, in doing this. And another thing that I like to say is that uh, in partnerships, yeah, so the partnership is the smallest one that I know is the marriage. And when I say this, everybody understands what I say. It means you don't have to be attached all the time. Each one has its own responsibilities, mutual respect, and you have a common objective. And this is the most important. All the rest, you can have different activities, you can have different sub-objectives, but to keep the common objective and not to think that you have to do all the things all together, because probably it will come a divorce very <laughs> early, okay? So this is, I wanted only to do this uh, remark. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much. So we'll need you as our next speaker in the next. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. And what came to my mind, and now I give the floor to, to whoever wants to react, is that I'm a professor and here we are in a university, you know, and we talk about transforming the world and, and making a difference. And you talked about time, patience, resistance to frustration, an emotional process. Who's teaching this, right? Who's focusing on, on this? And that's why it is so hard and who's focusing on bringing this common objective and, and working and I think the mission is a good example of this having a common objective is a way to to bring and align uh, values and uh, and interests and so on so thank you so much is there any reaction here and yeah of course I absolutely agree with all your comments and uh, it was very curious at the beginning because now we are in a new phase and now we are trying to build a uh, a new foundation in order to have a strong partnership. But the beginning, and during some time, uh, well, until now, in fact, uh, we had uh, not any signed document, any uh, a, a, a official agreement between us. And, and we were working, sharing human resources from the different organizations, sharing uh, also uh, funding and, res and, and resources, because uh, for us, the most important issue was the common goal. And it's true that empathy and interpersonal uh, uh, well, environment is very key, because all of us, we are not the director, general director of our organizations, but we are lead leaders of our, of our organizations. And was very important and was very key uh, the relationship between us. So this empathy, this this uh, interpersonal uh, well atmosphere or environment was very key. We have to 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 say. And after that, it's true that if you have specific outcomes to show to your organization, then you can bring you know the rest of the organization to this fantasy. But the, but but the beginning. To, to, to start the interpersonal the interpersonal uh, uh, tool I mean let's say is is absolutely is, is, is very key and the other the other question is the flexibility because of course we are uh, for uh, or we were because now we are we are more no? than, than than the beginning but but we were for completely different organizations so it, it's true that we had a common goal. But at the same time, we have well different complementary but different uh, interests. So the flexibility, you know, to understand other, to to adapt your point of view, to to adapt your uh, your thoughts, 
were very key too. So so empathy, of course, but also flexibility. I think is the other the other very key component. Yeah, Julio, totally Julio. Thank you, and Carlos. Yeah, Carlos, want to talk? Yeah. No, let me say let, let me say only one thing that I think we have learned in this process related to uh, what our friend has uh, named as uh, properties or characteristics of uh, working in power. Oh, okay. Important to, to think in a facilitating partnership, not only as an individual function of Valentina of, or of a professional that, uh, that uh, is uh, sustaining a partnership, it is important to think in terms of a property of the organization, of the, uh, an organizational property. I mean, all these characteristics uh, we are talking about uh, patient, long-term perspective, uh, cap capability to, to listen, it's individual, but if you want to create this kind of spaces as El Dia Después, you have to make it to it into an organizational, uh, 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 more than individual um, characteristic of property. I don't know if I mean because sometimes sometimes we think what we need is just an individual, exceptional individual that uh, is able to to have all, all these characteristics, and on uh, his or her shoulders, or the partnership is uh, um, um, uh, 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 developing. But uh, I think it's too hard to think in individual uh, terms. It's very important to create a space in which um, the, the, these properties are are a part of the values and the culture of the space or, or the organization we are creating. Yeah, well, thank you, Carlos. I, I think there is uh, some more comments uh, on the, in the chat, yes. So there is one here that they sent me. It says, uh, my question, well, right, thanks. My question is regulation and, and standards is great. How are we mapping the need for multi-level frameworking in unity to bring the partnerships function with purposes aligned with the SDGs? Julio, I have already included in the in the chat. Oh, thank uh, you, some, Monica. <laughs> no, no, I was just writing while we were speaking. So perhaps, and uh, we can we can uh, uh, take into account some some more comments. But uh, I think that we should focus not only on result uh, uh, KPIs because we are we are quite used to to have these results and uh, uh, it's very difficult for partnerships to focus on just the results as we have been mentioning flexibility patient and for sure that we do not have the results beforehand so it's very atypical to 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 have the reporting of some uh, partnerships without knowing beforehand the results that are expected so we have to focus on other kind of KPIs, such as, for example, activity indicators. So we have to select how many meetings we have had, how many local communities we have been speaking with, for example. So these are these activity indicators. We have some output indicators that are very relevant and not just the result, but the output for the activity and for sure impact. The the key and the nice word of impact. It's very relevant to, to have beneficiaries, but we need to focus and to go deep in the impact that these beneficiaries have. So this is something that we have to work on and we have some methodologies that are arising right now, but I think that is again, being innovative and changing the, the, the the, our perspective and not being just focusing on a monetary imp, a results, but in a, some qualitative impact uh, from these partnerships. So happy to 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 share with with other colleagues. But this was the I tried to to answer in the in the chat. It's very funny because one of the of the lessons we learned during the the process was to react very quickly in the chat. <laughs> when we are in the middle of a conference, when we had sometimes a, a go, uh, 100 people no, connecting at the same time. But uh, uh, let me just uh, to add uh, something that I think is very important regarding uh, uh, Monica's uh, words, because now we are 
always thinking in, in investment and in, in results in terms of maybe private sector. But from the public side, from the public institution side, it's it's very important because this kind of of of, uh, of tools are essential to respond one of the needs we have uh, over the table. The challenges we have now to transform our cities, to transform, to change uh, uh, our economy, the base of our, our economy or, or or our development model is huge, and and public institutions have not the tools to build uh, some projects uh, uh, sharing with private sector or other institutions. Sometimes they have not the opportunity, they have not the rules, they have not. So this kind of, of, of platforms like uh, EDD are supporting public institutions to transform reality. So I think it's, 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 it's also a, a response to a need we have to respond to these the challenges we have and, the, and, 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 and to support public institutions to do it. No? Wow, that's a great end point, right? Because in the end of the day, what we like to say is that the public issue and the public good is not public institution. Yeah. It's a public good. And we all need to work to change our society and to work for the public good. And that's a responsibility of all of us, not only of the public governments at all levels, local, regional, national, and pan, uh, or, or above, right? Okay, so we have to close because it's 29 past. I don't know if there is any other questions here. If not, what I would ask you, all the panelists, uh, is to try to do this hard exercise of uh, tweeting, right? So if you were to tweet uh, like one sentence, uh, you know, less than 45 characters or whatever the, the maximum number is, how would you summarize what you've learned today in this session. So is there like a headline that you want to, to transmit? And then maybe we can even publish this in, in Twitter. So maybe we'll uh, start from the online people. Carlos, Monica. OK. It's very difficult. I... Ah, okay. <laughs> Carlos, I leave you. The Academy go, go, first, go, go, please. Go, Monica, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 go, go, go. Yeah, I would just to 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 reinforce the the trust need for for and the need for for acting right now uh, in a radical collaborative uh, way. Thank you, Monica. Carlos. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, a message for uh, universities. Uh, after seven years saying what we have said in so many reports and so on, please, let's do it. It's not uh, so hard and we need to, to play this role as uh, facilitators or integrators of different uh, actors. Thank you, Carlos. Lady? Yeah. Ah, so, well, well, very, very sure. I think after that, we know, we really know that we are much more than the sum of the parts. Yes. That's a hard, hard task. I was thinking about let's fill in the collaboration gap, but I want also to add that the, um, the thing that you said before, Julio, about teaching this kind of role, and Carlos said that it's not an individual role, but also an organizational role can be played by an organization. So let's start um, learning by doing, doing by learning, and try to teach this kind of uh, capacities that are so, so important if we want to um, push these huge and large transition processes. Thank you. OK, so great summary. I would say after seven years of reporting, let's act in for all the stakeholders. So we need to act, as Monica said, and we need trust for that. So we need to act with trust. and there is this collaboration gap so we need to work together and to work together then we'll realize that we are much more than the sum of the parts but to do that we need to learn by doing to experiment on to learn by doing and doing by learning and then we need to teach this so thank you so much for attending thank you for your participation and hopefully you will come up from this session energized and with this experience inspiring you and happy to connect 
uh, elsewhere if you want and to talk in more detail about any of these issues. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.